Hey everybody, it's Will here again. Hope everybody is doing well. And today, I'm really excited to get to bring you another guitar from the collection of my good buddy Colin Baker for a review and demo on the 365 Days of Guitar show. Hope you dig. I want to take a minute at the start of this just to thank all of the new subscribers and supporters to the channel. Really appreciate all the positive feedback and engagement. People are really seeming to enjoy the videos and I appreciate that and I appreciate all of you. If you enjoy this sort of content, please consider subscribing if you haven't already or sharing these videos with your friends. Even a comment or a like or something on the video, it all helps the channel to grow and I appreciate whatever you can do to support. Thank you. Today, we're having a look at a 1997 Gibson ES-175. The 175 came out in 1949 and was intended to be a slightly lower cost alternative in the Gibson range for people that wanted an electrified archtop guitar but didn't want to spring for or couldn't spring for the more expensive L5 or the top of the line model which was the Super 400. As opposed to their all solid construction, or at least mostly solid from what I understand, the ES-175 is generally an all laminate guitar featuring laminate maple top, sides, and back. This particular example has excellent figuring. These featured a mahogany neck with a bound rosewood fingerboard and the split parallelogram inlays and a planar headstock without, um, without binding. This particular one has Gibson Deluxe modern tuners on it and a tunomatic bridge that's floating on the uh, piece of wood there. The originals from the early 50s probably would have had just like an archtop style bridge before the tunomatic was introduced. Originally these guitars featured a single P90 pickup upon their introduction in 49 and from about 1953 you could get a model that had two P90 pickups. And then I believe it was February or so of 1957 that they introduced the dual humbucking variation of the 175. Uh, the original would have of course had the highly coveted patent applied for pickups. This modern variation, um, the neck profile is a rounded but comfortable 60s style neck. It's probably not as large as what the guitars would have been in the 50s, but it's a fairly standard profile for modern Gibson guitars. Um, it's not really flat and slim like some of the uh, Gibsons I've played, but it's not the rounder, fuller 50s style profile. The pickups in this modern version, I believe, are 57 Classics. So a fairly close nod to that kind of PAF territory. And yeah, I think uh, spec-wise, these reissues, I guess, are reasonably true to the old spec as far as being a modern guitar. Some of my favorite players, or some of the notable players, I should say, that have used a 175 over the years, uh, the great Joe Pass played one in the jazz world. Um, he got it sometime in the early to mid 60s when it was given to him by a fan. And that was a guitar he used up until he passed away, I believe, for the most part. Uh, and in the rock world, Steve Howe from Yes, his main guitar for many years and probably still to this day in a lot of ways, was an ES-175 that he bought new from Selmer's Music in Charing Cross Road sometime in 1964 when he was about 17. Another interesting but maybe lesser known user of the 175 is actually Izzy Stradlin of Guns N' Roses. He played a white one when he was with GNR, kind of that mid to late 80s period. Uh, I'm not sure if that was a stock white guitar. Gibson did offer them in white finishes and limited colors. The story I had heard, I think, is that he had actually painted it himself. Let's just take a second to appreciate some of the, the figuring on this. This this particular one, sorry for the glare on the lights, but a really lovely appearance on this guitar. I've been enjoying playing on it here, and uh, 
You may have actually seen if you watched uh, part one of my Magic Sam lesson that I was playing this guitar. Uh, it's excellent for just sitting on the couch and noodling on, or you can do like my buddy Colin does, put foam in it and crank it up through a wall of loud martial amps. And it seems to do <laughs> both ends of the spectrum quite well. Anyway, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to some discussion portion. Special thanks again to my buddy Colin Baker for lending me this guitar. And thank you again to everybody for watching, engaging. And if you haven't already, and you dig this 365 Days of Guitar content, please consider subscribing to the channel or sharing with your friends. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get to some sound samples of the 1997 Gibson ES-175. Thank you.